Good morning, folks. Just had to drop the wife off at the station for work. Somebody's got to pay for these homebrew projects. Now, the normal warnings with this video, I am not advocating that you follow me. This power supply is a total experiment. It's using microwave transformers, and obviously the voltages that are involved in this project are deadly. So only proceed or follow if you are not only confident, but you know what you're doing, because electricity kills. Anyway, Let's roll the video. <laughs> Hello, fellow hams, and welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. For those of you that are regular viewers, you've probably been following my explorations into microwave transformers and the rewinding of microwave transformers. Now, the plan was to attempt to build a linear 20 amp power supply for the shack, and that was to eliminate noise uh, and RF interference from the switch mode that I have. Now, those of you that have watched have also seen that uh, um, I was working from this wonderful tome here by Drew Diamond, the VK3XU. And this is Projects for the Radio Amateur Volume 2. Now I have done a review of all four volumes of this wonderful Home Brewers Bible. Link below to those videos. And the supply that I've built is the Misers supply, 20 amp supply. Now if you want to know how much I've spent on this, later in the video I'll discuss some of the costs that were involved. Now there is also links to those videos of uh, the rewinding of the microwave transformers and load testing of those transformers and lots of great stuff like that. I also discuss how I got around the problem of the magnetizing current being too high and loads of other stuff. So all of the lead up videos you will find in the links below. Anyway, let's get on with it and uh, see how I went building this supply and whether I'm successful or not. Well, a lot of people, when I first floated the idea of using microwave transformers to build a 20 amp linear supply, said, just don't do it. And to all those people, I'd just like to say thank you. And to all the people that encouraged me, I'd also like to say thank you, because you all gave me very good reasons why I should try and why I shouldn't try. But the ever present was in my head and I just had to give it a go. So this is my attempt at a 20 amp linear power supply using microwave transformers. And as you can see, we've got 13.7 volts there. Now that can be adjusted on the side here, the uh, voltage adjustment. This is a one ohm approximately test load. So we should get like 13 or 14 um, amps out of this when we push it. And you can see there, 14, 13.8. So it's supplying um, 14 amps into a one ohm load, one ohm approximately, with just a 0.1 voltage drop. And um, that is great enough for me. I'm sure it would do 20 amps, no problem at all. <clears throat> In fact, at the end of this video, stick around, you might get to see that. Check it out. I have almost committed a neatness in the shack. Tonight I'm gonna to be working on the electronics for the linear PSU, so I wanted to have a bit of bench space here, but at the moment we're working outside because we're doing a lot of the drilling and we don't want metal shavings and whatnot in the shack, so we do it outside. We're just working on the case at the moment, getting our fuse holders in. Uh, we have a, a mains fuse holder and a 20 amp or 25 amp fuse holder. And the fuses are going to go in here. That's our mains cord going in there. Now, ideally, I'd have a reaming tool, but I don't. So what I'm using to get in here is, I've got to be very careful not to nibble out too much. But uh, the tool I'm using is called a nibbling tool. And you slide that um, head through the hole. And as the name implies, it nibbles away small chunks of metal. So provided you don't nibble away too much, um, you'll get away with it. And that's us in. We just need to drill the uh, holes to hold it in position. A bit of a progress report. We have mounted the, uh, the FET that does the control system for the heat. If the... Uh, power supply overheats 
so that will all be mounted very shortly we've got our LED to indicate either the fan is on or if there's an overheat condition this is going to be our on and off switch I haven't pushed that in properly yet because uh, I want to get heat shrink on the back of it because there'll be mains voltages across the uh, the back of this switch so we want to make sure that's nice and safe and the cord what I'm going to use I was going to buy a plug and um, wire but uh, buying uh, it by the meter it's actually cheaper just to buy myself a decent length uh, extension cord, 5 meter extension cord. I'll probably keep 3.5, 4 meters on it because uh, I might need to run it a fair distance to get to a power point. And, and we'll go from there. But uh, that was actually a cheaper way of doing it than buying the, uh, the plugs and everything separately. Thank you Bunnings. This is my meter uh, for the shunt and for voltage. So it should give me current and voltage. Very cheap, like $12 on Alibaba, much cheaper than buying a panel meter. And I've got it hooked up to my dummy load, which is, you know, nominally 50 ohms. I think it's actually 47 ohms, not quite 50. And that's our shunt. And we're just going to wire this up. And it's at the low end of what the current reading should be. So if it's reading point something and you know, 12 volts or something, we're, we're good to go. Fingers crossed. Looks like it's going to work. And there you have it, 12.3 and 0.1 amps for it. But uh, as you can see here, 0.15 of an amp, 150 milliamps, and 29 volts DC. And uh, once we get the regulation on it, it should be good. Transformers. don't feel too hot which is good but, uh, we shall see over the long term how this goes now we've just got to uh get onto that heat sink and start wiring up some uh, past transistors finally at the test bench and it's the weekend and uh, i'm going to be wiring up these past transistors so cut myself a heap of uh a dc cable here to to wire those up now the holes in the uh, little microformer here are very, very small because they're only to allow the pins of the transistor to go through. Um, I'm going to actually bore that out a little bit because I want to actually um, insulate my transistor leads like that. So I'll be heat shrinking these leads on and uh, we can do that now actually. Just to make sure that uh, we're nicely insulated. I'm going to be using this heatsink, which is massive. Uh, it's off an old audio amplifier. And we'll be loading the uh, four pass transistors and the uh, control transistor on this surface here. And so I'm just thinking as a workflow goes, life might be a lot easier for me if I get them all wired up first. So I'm probably going to have to put in the holes uh, for the leads in these mica pass uh, insulators, but uh, we should be okay. There's a drill in the mic, I think, so hopefully it doesn't crack. And maybe I should go and find that out, and then we'll, we'll, we'll come back. Yes, a uh, little bit of cracking. We were able to drill it, so I'm going to do that. So we're going to need all five of these transistors loaded up and insulated, and then we're going to mount them on our mega heat sink on this side, and then this whole unit here, uh, is going to float above the top of the power supply. We're going to insulate the transistors from this heatsink, so this will not be at uh, the DC potential for the uh, the collectors of the transistors. There's always a chance of it shorting out. Why expose yourself to that possibility? So we're just having a wonderful Saturday afternoon watching YouTube POTA activation videos and wiring up pass transistors. So there are our, uh, four transistors that are going to be the uh, current pass and of course same transistor that's also controlling the whole mob. So this one's going to tell these ones what to do as to how much current they're going to pass. We'll have the same current hopefully and uh, we're well on our way to uh, getting the electronics done. Well, it's so lucky we did a dry run on mounting these pass transistors because um, I can trim the little insulator that goes into the hole, but I'm unable to actually spin this nut 
down. So what I'm going to have to do is get the angle grinder out and just clear out where the fins are interfering with uh, tightening down these transistors. Not a big deal. I've got the tools. Um, it's just going to add a little bit of time, but uh, we will get this to work. <laughs> Now, to all people that work metal with finesse, my sincerest apologies um, for what you're about to witness. Um, <laughs> that is my sad efforts at clearing out uh, enough of the fin to allow the um, to allow the screw to actually and the grommet that uh, insulates the uh, collector from this to to go in. Um, I will clean it up with a bit of sandpaper and some files. It really doesn't matter because all you're going to see on the actual uh, power supply will be the top and my usual way of getting things done is if you don't see it then you don't have to worry about how it looks as long as it functions now I know for the purest home brewers out there you're filled with utter total horror um, once again my sincerest apologies and this episode of how to destroy bits of metal is brought to you by Han super dry low carb uh, it's not actually brought to you by these people, but at the moment, I've been uh, hitting the keto hard just for the beginning of the year. It's my usual yearly purge to bring the weight down so that I can be the usual beast that I am and eat like an animal. Cheers, and this is to home brewing and QRP. Hi, folks. A wee bit of progress. Uh, I have managed to get the uh, standoffs in the... Uh, in the heat sink now as you can see as previously advertised um, absolutely butchered the bottom of this but um it is going to be sitting on the uh top of this uh power supply like so voila and um look i'll get i'll let you have a closer look quick progress report that's how we're going to mount it. Um, we can adjust the height of it, but uh, there'll be a bit of electronics under here, so it's nice to have a little bit of ventilation happening. Um, I'm happy with that. It's uh, looking very Art Deco. Well, maybe Art Deco meets Gothic Frankenstein's monster. Well, we have a big hole in the side of this case where the uh, power supply was. I've got a, a lid from a box. It was actually from the QRP, OzQRP kit. Um, that's the lid that comes with the actual box that you don't use. And, uh, we're going to pop that in there and uh, let's just stop your little fingers from going in there because we've got some mains voltages there we probably don't want to get near. And now we can't stick our fingers in the uh, in the side of the case, and hopefully that'll stiffen it up a little bit too. But uh, I don't think I'm going to be walking around carrying this thing. It weighs an absolute ton, and uh, as much as I'd like to put it on the top of my bench, I think it's going to live under the bench because uh, it's going to collapse my shelf. An ugly PSU needs an ugly shelf, and this is the shelf that I'm building to sit under the bench. This has to be the definition of optimism. I have uh, put my shelf underneath my bench in preparation for a successful build on this ugly build 20 amp linear supply using microwave transformers. Hey, good evening, folks. It's Saturday night. We've been working on the power supply all day. Uh, we had to do some major surgery of the back of this heat sink so that we could uh, mount these pass transistors. But we now have all five mounted on our heat sink, which is great. The main thing to do with these uh, 203 type packages is to make sure that you isolate the collector, which is actually the case, from the heat sink. Now, you can design a heat sink such that it's insulated from the case, and then you've got your collector voltage sitting on the heat sink. 
Um, some of these are anodized, which means that they're not very good uh, conductors on the surface. There can be issues with uh, having an exposed uh, collector like that, um, or exposed vo DC voltage on the case. Um, so I like to isolate the actual transistor. I think it's a much better thing to do. There's a process for mounting TO3 packages that needs to be followed. Um, there's heaps of videos online, but I'm going to go to the board quickly and I'm going to show you how they're mounted, just so you've got an idea of what's going on and why we've done what we've done on this thing. But the main thing to do when you actually mount these transistors is just get your, uh, your meter here in uh, continuity mode and you can sit your probe on the case and on the heat sink. So I'll just try and hold this up and not have it scratch me. So when I'm on the, on the actual heat sink, which is conductive, um, you can hear it beeping. Now if I go in onto any of these cases and it beeps, it means we failed to isolate the collector. So that one is dodgy. So I'm going to have to check that one and make sure that uh, I've actually managed to isolate it because that is a problem. So I actually didn't realise that was a problem so it's great that we've done that test and uh, We'll fix that up and then I'm going to go to the board and I'm going to show you a little bit about how a TO3 package is mounted. Okay folks, before I actually start this presentation, I'm just going to show you a couple of things and what they look like in real life in case, uh, in case we're actually a bit confused. So just to let you know, this is a grommet. Um, and this is what was um, causing the problem with the transistor shorting to the case because it actually crushed that uh, flange um, or that sleeve, sorry, it wasn't sitting inside the hole correctly. Um, so now it is and uh, we have the transistor isolated from the heatsink. So that's the grommet, that's what it looks like. It's a tiny little piece of plastic. Um, the mica washer is uh, that and it's just, um, it's just drilled so that it's got the holes for the leads in it and at each end you can see there is uh, holes for the actual screws that hold the transistor down. Now on either side of this uh, micro washer, which provides electrical insulation, we want to have heat uh, transfer. Now it transfers heat reasonably well, but just to make sure that the heat's transferred correctly, we use some of this uh, nano diamond thermal compound. So basically you need a heat sink compound or um, a transfer, thermal transfer paste. It's an insulator, but it uh, is an insulator for electricity not for heat, it, it conducts heat really beautifully and that's why we use that. And you'll see that on the top of our, you know, microprocessors and computers and anything that's got a heat sink on it will normally have uh, a little bit of this. A little bit goes a long way. And um, don't eat your lunch while you're using this because, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure it's, it's pretty toxic. Okay, on, on with the video and we'll um, jump over to the board and I'll, sh I'll have a quick discussion about uh, how this all works. Okay, so um, the package we're using for this 2N3055 transistor. And the transistor is what's known as a pass transistor. So our uh, voltage and current regulation happens via these transistors. So they're being controlled uh, for current and voltage and all that sort of stuff. So um, we've got uh, four of those, five amps on each one roughly, uh, maximum, and uh, one transistor controlling the lot. It's like the ringmaster for the uh, supply. Um, so we've got our heat sink here, and what we do is we put some uh, of that heat sink compound either side of our micro washer and that sits between the transistor case and the heat sink. Um, the leads are usually very narrow and they're going to miss the actual heat sink but I've uh, put some um, heat shrink on them just to make sure that they don't touch the heat sink um, so they remain electrically isolated from the actual heat sink and then I put the screw through. Now the screw head is contacting with the case of our transistor so it's going to be at the potential we need for our collector. If I was just to put the nut on the end of this screw, um, it would short the case to the heat sink and um, we then have the whole heat sink at the potential, the DC potential of the collector. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to put that grommet inside the hole and it's going to provide insulation um, for the nut when you, when you tighten down the transistor. So the only part of this transistor that has the potential on it is the case and our um, heat sink remains at zero. Anyway, hope I haven't confused you. If you want to look up uh, TO3 package installation, you will find a heap of videos, a slew of videos that will do a much better job of describing how this process should happen in a much more systematic fashion. 
and uh, you'll probably um, get better information than I've given you just then. But anyway, that was in layman's terms um, and we'll get back to building the power supply. Tonight we've been freestyling it on the control circuitry. I've still got to get all of these collectors on the uh, same voltage, run some leads up from the inside of the case and um, work out how I'm going to mount all this. But uh, we will get there. We're very, very close. I think we're about, you know, a good, uh, not even a night away from uh, completing this. So exciting times. I'm just hoping it uh, behaves itself. And then here on the side of the case, well, we used to have our DVD uh, set up and, yeah, rough and ready. But these are brackets that came out of a microwave. So, you know, a little uh, tribute to the microwave and how useful a lot of the screws have, I've used have come out of microwaves. And of course, our rear wound transformers. But that's uh, how we're going to set our voltage to 13.8 volts. And um, yeah, hopefully it all works, but we shall find out very shortly. By this weekend, um, I will either have a pile of smoking garbage or a 20 amp linear supply for the shack. And this is my Thai Hill Tribe girl that uh, I've been planning on finishing forever. Um, flowers, it's just underpainting, that all needs to be done. And we need to uh, work on these uh, brass rings and whatnot. So. Uh, I'm hoping to maybe get that done for the Wallara art prize so I can re get rejected for that prize like I get rejected for every single other art prize. But uh, yeah, it's been a while since I finished a painting and I'm starting to feel like I maybe should finish this one. Let me know in the comments section below whether you think I should finish this painting. Now the plan was to have this power supply well and truly completed by the end of this weekend. I thought two days I'll have its back broken provided nothing goes wrong. Well of course we got through the week and it felt like I was just wrung out like a lemon. So I've just been sleeping this entire weekend basically. Sleeping it away. Had to obviously go and get stuff done that uh, doesn't get done during the week as well. All the usual domestic uh, drudgery that needs to be taken care of. So here we are. It's getting on, I don't know, 6 o'clock or something in the afternoon and we've only just started uh, getting back into it. Uh, I've wired up everything that needs to be wired up inside so we're in that in the we are in the home straight we're going to be wiring up uh, everything to this uh, heat sink and this uh, control circuitry and then we'll do the mandatory tests to make sure we've got no stray earths and all that sort of stuff and then fingers crossed uh, I have a working power supply but does it ever go that simple for me it does sometimes but I don't think it's going to go that simple this time I've just got a sneaking suspicion that something's going to bite me on the bum but uh, we shall see. The WIA news broadcast. Now, against my better judgment, I really do want to test this up to close to 20 um, amps, if not a little over 20 amps. So. Um, the plan is to, I haven't got a 25 amp fuse, which is a recommended fuse. The only value I could get was 30 and 20. So I've got a 30 amp in this and I'm going to put a 20 amp in it when I'm using it under general conditions. And that should be more than enough current for me. But let's see, um, this is about 0.7 ohm, 24, 25 amps at 12.1 volts. I'll do it one more time. 12.6 volts, 24.8 and yeah. Check out, um, just check out how, um, I don't know if you can see the uh, test load, but uh, yeah, it's getting pretty hot. But yeah, um, it's maintaining at 12 volts, 25, nearly 25 amps. So um, just uh, out of curiosity, past transistors, that's the, um, yep, they're all cool. They're all cool to touch. So. Um, I would deem that a success, and um, I'm a happy chappy. We'll be putting this uh, power supply into service. Um, like I said, it's got thermal protection on it um, to that comes on, and if I want, if we're really working it hard, we get that fan going. Happy days. My supply has found its happy forever home, we hope. Um, I'm obviously not going to leave it running when I'm not here. I'm going to give it a really good break in, uh, see whether the... Uh, thermal protection kicks in and whether things are overheating, whether the transformers are playing up. Um, I plan on opening it up 
um, regularly and to look for signs of uh, uh, damage, heat problems, all that sort of stuff. Um, it is truly an experimental supply. But at the present moment, um, I have rigged it up. The plan is actually to have a buzz bar on the back of the bench here that has DC posts on it that I'll be able to just hook up to. Um, and I'm hoping to try and put a little bit of uh, RF suppression, all that sort of stuff into those lines as well to stop RF from getting into the power leads. Um, this is by no means the final version of it, but I just wanted to see it in position. And I'll show you um, the small amount of things at the moment that it's powering, hence uh, yeah, zero amps being registered on the, on the meter. But we know that it can get up past 25 and still be alive. And here is the switch mode that's re um, being replaced. And previous video I talk about this, this is another Drew Diamond suppression uh, project to make the supply quieter. And it was quiet, it was very quiet, but um, I just wanted to build myself a good old school linear supply. The plan with this is to get on the test bench and maybe actually build a circuit that allows me to make it into a variable lab supply so that I can use it for troubleshooting and whatnot. And at the present moment, uh, our supplier is running our OSQRP. It's running this meter, which will be swapped out. And we're going to be doing a video on this, my new toy. Um, so that's coming up. And um, of course, uh, previous video, my audio filter for CW. Lots of stuff coming up. And uh, I'm just a happy chappy to have that uh, supply living under the bench, happily providing DC to the shack. Not a nasty switch mode supply, a beautiful old school linear supply. Now, as promised, I'm going to discuss some of the cost involved. And certainly, um, had I shopped around and been a little bit more resourceful, I could have saved myself a lot more money. But I'd say, um, not including the current clamp um, that I bought to play around with the transformers, uh, not including the transformers because they were free, they came out of microwaves, not including the heatsink, which I got off an old audio amplifier, and the case, which is an old PC case. I still probably spent all up with the current shunt and the meter and uh, all the parts, capacitor. Um, I got a lot of stuff from Altronics. Um, I got some stuff from JCAR, which is not the cheapest place to shop. Um, I'm probably out of pocket about 240 or so dollars um, for this 20 amp supply. And I know a lot of people are going to be saying, you just could have bought yourself a secondhand linear supply for that with probably a higher current rating. And that is most likely the truth. But um, I now have a supply that uh, I know how everything works in it. I had a great deal of fun building it. I certainly learned a lot and uh, am I continuing to learn? Um, as I build and if anything goes wrong with it I know it inside out and I'll be able to repair it quite easily so I'm a happy chappy I'm happy to have a supply that I've built and in the long run the ambition is to build the entire station from top to bottom I will have the odd bit of um, nostalgic boat anchor gear from my youth um, and I will continue to buy that stuff because that's very enamoring but uh, the plan is top to bottom, antennas, power supplies, switching, everything will either be kit built or uh, home rolled, preferably home rolled. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Art of Engineering. Thank you for sticking around right to the end. And I will see you in lots of upcoming videos. I have some new toys in the shack. I have uh, some testing to do of my Baofeng. So lots of great videos coming up. So if you haven't already, like I said, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of my next video. 73, and I'll see you in the next video.